when I get a rescue dog, I want to make sure that the fit is going to be right and we're set up for success because I'm going to get attached to the dog. They're going to get attached to me. And the last thing I want is to yet rehome that dog again. And there's three things that I think are so important to make sure I'm successful. People ask about getting a rescue. Um, I always caution, as much as I've loved my rescues, um, some of it's been a whole lot of work. I also have known when I've gone in with any of my dogs or my very first start with my pig, that I don't want to fail and have to rehome that that dog again. Um, that's not going to be in their best interest. So I want to make sure that I'm able to support them. And this is going to end well for the two of us because we need to have a great relationship so they can have freedom. I don't want them locked in my basement because they've got a problem and I can't deal with that. So I need to know and you need to know that that dog is the fit for you and you're able to work through whatever that dog needs to be successful. I also caution people that um, getting a rescue dog has sort of gotten to be this cool thing. Um, and so many people have done that. And it seems even cooler when I get my rescue dog um, from another country rather than a shelter down the street. So it's gotten sort of vogue that way. Um, and there's because of that, there's people looking to make money off that. So there's people that breed dogs to sell them as rescues. Dirt bags. So I want to make sure I'm not supporting that and causing more of a problem and dogs not having good homes. Um, I also want to make sure that I do my research, that there's not going to be a problem that's insurmountable for me. Um, you know, if you have a family, um, young kids or a spouse that's really not into the dogs, um, you need to understand what behavioral problems can you support? You know, if you got a dog that had some aggression, you know, are you willing to find a trainer and spend a fair amount of time, baby, and money to to work through that, that problem or be able to say, I'm good managing my dog and that, you know, they're not getting together with the rest of the family's dogs uh, because they're just not going to be happy. So really understanding um, that, the costs involved, you know, what's the medical background um, with that dog? Because in some cases, rescues are going to have um, higher costs associated with them. And are you ready for that? So rescue dogs can be phenomenal. It's great to give a dog um, a home. I've had phenomenal relationships with my rescue dogs. But making sure when you go forward, your eyes are open, knowing that you may get some baggage, you likely are, some of it you're going to change and some of it you may not. Um, and are you set up and is that the path you want to take? The first thing I want to establish is relationship. I have three main goals when I'm building relationship. One, I want to build the dog's confidence and especially their trust and confidence in me. Uh, with animals, um, it's a little different than people. People always say, oh, I want my puppy to love me or I want my older dog, I want the rescue to love me. But what dogs need, because they're animals, is to feel safety above all else. So they need to know that I've got their back. They need to be confident, especially for a rescue. Puppies that clean slate. For a rescue dog, they may have some baggage. Maybe they weren't treated well or maybe they weren't supported at all. They were just left to roam um, and they don't know um, how to trust somebody else. So it's really important I'm building their confidence, their trust, that I've got their back and that I'm not going to hurt them and I'm not going to ask them to do anything they're not ready for. So I also want to build value specifically for the dog having value for me. Um, if I want a dog that can be off leash and is going to be my future dog that looks to me, gets tons of freedom, it's really important they want to please me. They want to exhibit the desired behaviors that I'm looking for. So they need to find me valuable. And a lot of people, I know what you're saying, it's all about, this is where she pulls out the treats. Um, and yes, I'm going to use food because I'm going to use every tool available to me. And, and food can be a great way to build value for work, for myself. But in some cases, those rescue dogs may not be that interested in treats because they haven't been sort of learned that early on. They may not be that interest food motivated or toy motivated. So I may build value a little bit differently than I do with my puppy. With rescue dogs, one thing I've seen is that often they don't have that intrinsic value for toys or treats. So I may need to spend some time building a little bit of value for um, 
food in some different ways. And we've done some YouTube videos on that. Um, and I may need to teach them um, in case in fact, all of my rescues, none of them have had a natural instinct for toys. So I need to teach them um, and build that drive to chase so that we can use those toys in the future. With a rescue dog, just like a puppy, but even more so, I need to teach them how we're going to communicate. And I'm going to communicate in a few ways um, with touch and with some rescue dogs, they're not going to be comfortable with that. So I need to build that trust in me and the understanding that my touch is going to be giving them information and doesn't mean anything bad. I need, need them to know that they're going to have to be groomed and I don't want them to be stressed by that. And I don't want to be stressed having to groom my rescue dog for the rest of their life. I also need them to understand that a leash is going to be something. I'm going to use that leash to guide them. So they need to be comfortable with that because they may not have felt that pressure or they may have felt it inappropriately in the past. I'm also going to use, you know, signals or hand gestures um, to show my dog what they want. And many dogs haven't had any guidance in the past. So this is going to be very new. I need to build that trust. This is a good thing that I'm showing them. And most older dogs, that's what they want. Dogs want a leader that's going to show them how to behave. It's no different than us. You know, you go to a new school, a new job, you're very uncomfortable if you don't know what, how to behave in those situations. So I want to show my dog how I'm going to, um, describe that to them. I also want to understand how my dog communicates. I want to learn when they're feeling a little bit of pressure, when they're uncomfortable or important signs like they need to go to the washroom. I need to start to pay attention to those things so that I can understand the dog's communication to me, not just mine to them. It is really important to be patient when we get an older dog. A lot of times they come from a bad situation or even if it's not that bad, they're in this whole new situation. And a lot of times people think this is the time, especially if my dog's had a bad situation, I'm gonna make it up to them but we don't need to make it up to them in the next 10 minutes because it can be very, very overwhelming. So my experience is we need to let those dogs have a little bit of time just to get used to the new environment, used to me being around. Um, and I need to learn a little bit about them so that I am not uh, by accident um, overwhelming them or in any way making them uncomfortable. So trying to pet that dog, hug that dog, um, start to do lots with it um, is not the best way to build my relationship. And yet, you know, with a little tiny puppy, I'm not looking to go get my disc and do disc freestyle or a lot of high level training, but I get that new dog. I may be saying, wow, he's, he's built for this and he's old enough to do it safely. But I need to know that hardcore training is going to come down the road. Um, taking them out, meeting lots of new people, going to lots of new environments is going to happen. They're going to have a great life, but not that first little while. I'm going to let them just get their legs underneath them. I also need to understand my new dog. Um, you know, what are their strengths and weaknesses or where are the opportunities? I need to understand, you know, where their thresholds are for me, me touching them. You know, if we're doing a little bit of foundation training work, you know, how much time before they get mentally tired? I need to understand those things. Um, you know, I made the mistake early on, not necessarily really understanding the dog. I had one that came that looked like he was so, so chill. Um, and he was out with my other dogs and everything was successful. Um, and then when I started to one day, um, do some disc with another dog, um, he turned out of stimulation. He just got so excited and grabbed one of my other dogs. And, um, I had no idea how much he lacked that impulse control and how fast he would stimulate. So I put him in a situation without truly understanding him. So taking that time, different situations where it's not quite as intense to understand that. So really being patient and saying, I've got a whole life to live with this dog and to make his life so much better, but I really want to understand him a little bit more. Also understand, you know, is it impulse control he lacks? Is it, he's very pressure sensitive. Um, I had one rescue dog um, that was just used to um, not being cared for. And um, if he was off leash, he liked to run 
500 yards straight out, full speed, regardless of what was out there, um, and then come back. So yes, he's coming back, but that's not very safe in my world. What if there's a road or if there's other people he's going to dis disturb, or if there's other loose dogs? Um, we need to understand that I want a barrier around me when he's off leash. Um, so I need to understand his tendency is to want to go 100 miles an hour or some of those um, herding dogs, they're going to want to have distance for me. Other dogs are wanting to be close. So they're going to be uncomfortable if I'm getting too far away. So I need to understand that before I put them in situations where they're going to get really nervous or hurt. If you're like me, uh, the Burke was my last uh, new dog and he was over four, um, looked like he would be a phenomenal disc dog, really, really cool. So I just wanted to start doing things with him. Again, I want to be my dog, my new dog, to see me as their advocate. And if I'm putting them in that situation too early, I'm really not there, that person that they're going to look up to and say, you keep me safe and you keep me comfortable. The other thing is um, so many adult dogs that we get, especially if they're rescues and they come from not great situations, will suffer from separation anxiety. And I learned that the hard way with an early rescue. So I've learned now with those new dogs, as much as they need to decompress, I also need them because even if they're going to love all this, if the dog's not overwhelmed and they say, yes, this is fantastic. Carol's spending time with me. We're training. We're doing cool stuff. We're hiking. Um, that now the minute I'm away from them, they're going to freak because suddenly they're in this good situation. So I, separation anxiety is one of the worst things for dogs and people to go through um, that I've ever experienced. So I don't want that to happen. So the first uh, several months with my young dog is going to be um, a little boring and I'm going to keep myself in check from doing all those fun things. I said I don't do a lot of you know, training per se when I first get a rescue dog. Um, but I do do foundation work, no different than when a puppy. Puppies, um, I want to build that foundation. So with my older dog, I want a few key things. One is the idea, one key word is I use the word yes when they're right. So it really helps my pup if I'm teaching them some handling and I'm touching them and they're nice and calm as I'm reaching down that leg. Yes. So I can show them that, hey, being calm. So that word pays off so many times. So I'm going to teach them that. The other thing I'm going to teach them is to respond to my commands first time every time. Something that's key to the McCann method. You know, you've heard people out there, maybe you've done it, spot spot, 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 you know, calling their dog. And that can be really dangerous or sit, sit, sit. And it always drives me nuts. My students know that because people do it and then, and the dogs learn not to listen. And then they, um, you know, they go off and um, sometimes they need their dog to hold that position or to respond to their name. And then we get mad. We've never taught them. So I want my dog to learn how to respond first time every time. And how is that going to happen? So one, with my new dogs, they're not going to get a ton of freedom. One, most of those new dogs may not want that. And I want to teach them we're now a team and I'm giving them information. So they're going to be on leash with me. They're going to be fairly close. So when I say things like their name, I'm never saying except when I can help them to get it right. Now, that might be with food. Absolutely, that's a great tool. So I'm going to say that name and one second later, I'm going to show them to respond to that name. Might be with a toy. It might simply be with some touch. It might be saying that name, giving them a touch so they turn so that I can yes and acknowledge them. And again, that could be food. That could be my touch. Or for those rescue dogs that may not be comfortable with my touch or want a big playtime, just my voice in a uh, you know a praising manner is going to be rewarding to the dog because they may not have gotten that feedback before this. I also need my new dog, no different than a puppy, to look to me for how to behave. Because uh, I've had rescues where, um, you know, one came from a hoarding situation that, um, so no guidance or supervision at all. Just figure it out because you're on your own. Um, another one who lived in a kennel for four years. So not a lot of problem solving going on because 
nothing changed in life. Um, so in both cases, they haven't looked to people for guidance. There hasn't been a lot of input and most rescues, not all, but most probably haven't had a lot of good guidance or positive guidance. So I want to teach them to look to me again, um, meaning that they're going to spend time. They're going to be close to me, not have a lot of freedom away from me, um, teaching them how to learn, how to problem solve and how to take those cues from me. There's one huge mistake puppy owners make. And you know what? Most rescue dog owners make the same mistake. So whether your new dog is very young or older, this applies to you. Don't make that mistake. Check out this video. On that note, I'm Instructor Carol. Happy training.